just a little quick video. I um, did a Baker Creek order just to kind of fill in the gaps in my seed my seed stash. Um, and then I was I was running out of a few things that I knew I wanted to grow in the fall. So I already have it opened up and we'll just start. So the first one that I that I got was clover. I thought it would be a real I have terrible grass. So I thought this would be a really nice grass alternative. My yard is mostly weeds as it is, so I thought why not why not try clover? Uh, and it's nitrogen fixing, which will be really helpful. This one is 300 seeds and no, 2,000 seeds. 2,000 seeds for $3. So, um, I am hopeful on this clover. Uh, I'm going to sow it in the backyard and, uh, we'll just see what happens. The next one I picked up was this artichoke, um, Colorado Red Star artichoke. It says can be grown as, in, as an annual from seed, one to three foot tall, edible, that produces stunning purple tinged globes. It is ideal wherever overwintering. And, um, huh, okay. Seedlings require chill period, night, nights below 45, but above freezing to produ produce artichokes. Um, I bought this one because it was, um, more, it's supposed to be more heat tolerant than the regular, I think, golden golden globe artichoke green globe green globe artichoke and so i thought i would give this one a try and i think they also look really beautiful in the garden too the next one, oh this is a free seed paris island lettuce best grown as a spring or fall crop in most areas i will definitely be planting this over the winter probably starting around october late october november time frame but i'm excited about this free lettuce normally i i think the last few times i've ordered from baker creek i got lemon balm as my free seed so it's nice to have something different um oh the next one this one doesn't say what it is on the back this is a sugar baby bush melon um and i I have a lot of the vining one, but I thought I would try the bush just to see if there's a big difference. Um, the sugar baby back here, it is probably 15 feet long in any direction. The next one I got, I got some dill. I mostly got this for the pollinators. This is early flowering with large seed heads, excellent in pickles and many other foods. I would probably try some in pickles as well. I only got, I think like three or four cucumbers to actually take this year, which was so weird, but I am eating cucumbers and they're delicious. I love garden grown cucumbers because they're just so, they're like a lot sweeter than the ones you get at the store. I think because I can pick them exactly when I'm ready. So dill for the pollinators. The next one, strawberry watermelon. I saw someone else talking about this one on YouTube and they said it was their very favorite watermelon. Um, and so I was like, might as well give it a shot. This one originally selected from a Florida heirloom. So perfect for me here in uh, Florida zone 8B and introduced in 1989 by Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Gorgeous strawberry pink flesh is sugary sweet fruit to 25 pounds. I think I'm gonna try it right over there to my, on my left. I think I'll grow some over there and see how it does. Um, it is a little bit later in I quit. It is a little bit later in the year for um, starting seeds, but watermelon also tend to take the heat a little bit better. Um, I have noticed with my watermelons in the past, I will get a crop probably just before July and then in July and August they kind of stop and then I won't get any more melons until usually like the end of September I'll start getting melons again they just it seems like my most of my plants just go they kind of go dormant in the in the summer in the heat of the summer they don't die they just kind of take a break um, and I don't know if it's like that for a lot of southern gardeners or just me <laughs> The next one I got was this Hales Best um, cantaloupe and developed around 1920 by a Japanese market grower in California. So I love cantaloupe and I feel like I can never feel like I, ha I can never have enough melons. Um, the next one I got is lemongrass and this one I got to put around my banana pit. I am never going to put 
uh, tomatoes around my banana pit again. So I thought lemongrass was a really good companion plant for the bananas. Um, I also thought it would be really good in Thai food or stir fries, that kind of thing. The next one is, oh, this is one that I ran out of, the Bait Alpha Cucumber. This is one of my favorite cucumbers. This is actually the one I'm growing right now. Very popular in the Mediterranean. Fine flavor, high yield, spurpless, and have a great shelf life. Superior for slicing and pickling. I found um, online that typically these are picked when they're smaller, but mine will go from like this big to like this big in a day. So mine tend to just get big fast and I'm picking them when they're closer to eight inches, um, which is fine by me. The last seed that I got was this teddy bear sunflower. Um, they grow 18 to 24 inches tall and I just thought this would be a really fun one. I especially love that it's like more small petal, like little tiny tufts of, of petals instead of like the big bloom. So um, this is one, I don't know that I'll grow this one this year or I might try it in the fall. Uh, we'll see. It says there's 35 seeds so I may just uh, plant some out in the front garden and see what happens because you know they could either take and do really well or not and eh. but my neighbor she loves to plant flowers and sow seeds with me so I do it partially for her. She finds a lot of joy in the pretty. Anything that I can do to help kind of foster that that mindset from a, from an early age. She's learned an awful lot from my garden. She's not my kid, but I've known her since she was two. So that's it for my Baker Creek mid-season restock. Have you ever ordered from Baker Creek? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite seeds that you've ordered from Baker Creek are. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.